check the tone. Uh, hey, welcome to another episode of uh, Pete. Uh, my name is Frank Castillo. Uh, give it up for my co-host, JP Noda. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm very excited for this episode. We got, uh, you know, I mean, the guy himself. I'm very excited to have him on this podcast. We hung out this weekend at the Comedy Store. I got to show him around. He got to see all of a really good main room lineup, and he got to witness the beauty that is Don Barris uh, late night. Uh, nice round of applause for Roger. Thank you, guys. Thank I you. didn't want to butcher your last name, but it's Voldarsky? Volodarsky. Volodarsky. It's a tough one. Yeah. Volo. Man, that sounds so cool. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect time. Volo? Yeah, I don't know. Just Volo Volo, Volo you know? would have been cool. Yeah. Volodarsky's like a mouthful. People shock me, though. They get it more often than you would think. Volo sounds like a dope DJ name. My mom's maiden name, which I probably shouldn't be saying. <laughs> but, you ever social uh, security too? <laughs> it, was, it was Volus, which okay. is like super cool. Volus is like yeah. so nice and easy, five letters. And I ended up with the one that's like 10 letters, super hard to say. There's an Arsky. Yeah, People yeah, don't yeah. even try in some cases. They're just like, Vladoski. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, nice. well, I'm glad to have you here, man. Uh, dude, nice how do you have fun uh, at the store this weekend? Oh my God. I, the store just has such a crazy energy. Like being there, I, I was also a bit too high walking in, if that if that can be a thing. <laughs> as you're like walking me through it, and it's empty, and the lights are on. Honestly, it just like struck me as like, whoa, I feel like I'm in a movie or something. It, it was cool, and just comedians are some of my favorite people to hang around. It's like hanging around artists, but it never gets awkward. It's just always yeah. fucking funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just I love being there, man. I'm eventually going to annoy you by asking. Not at all. Not at all. Me. It's like one of my favorite things to bring weed people, especially to the store, especially the back, that sacred ground area. Because mm. that really is, I mean, it feels like our office because it's um, only the smokers really go back there or the people who do mushrooms and drugs. And um, okay. it's also the you're only you're only allowed to go back if you're paid regular or a guest of somebody and that's why i like taking people back there because it's so just chill you saw how crazy it was and well, it's the spot it's where like all the comedians are everybody's like you know whatever some are smoking cigarettes but people are mostly like smoking weed it's where i prefer to hang there i feel like i'm in the way so i don't want to be in the way but that's where like the funniest jokes are and like the greatest energy exchange. I love it. I love it really it. is. I mean, you've had some of the coolest moments in Sacred Ground, especially just being a guy that's not like a comedian, but just being like the fly on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You hear the funniest shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. I mean, we got to smoke with Chappelle back there. We got to smoke with so that's many random it. people. <coughs> What's it like smoking with Chappelle? It was uh, definitely interesting because he walked by. <laughs> he got stoned with us once. We hit the big joint you had. Then he came back later. And he was really high, and then he was like, oh, I couldn't. And you know what I mean? Because he was just... That's the thing with JP's joints. They'll always... Like, people will take a hit and then turn it down afterwards. <laughs> that's your soy paper ones, yeah, right? Yeah. They, they, it's just yeah. an eighth. I think it's just an eighth. So it's just like... Eighth of, like, good weed, too, usually. It's stuff, like, right off the shelf of the shop. Um, you know, it was all ground right then and there. Didn't get It's old. so funny. It was, like, massive. And I'm like, okay, you're busting out the good stuff. We're hanging out in the back. Like, it makes sense. You'll pull out, like, the, you know, whatever, nicely rolled joint. And then I come back after a few sets, and there's like four in the ashtray. You guys were like, must have been just chiefing back yeah. there. Well, that's actually, that's kind of what we did, and that's kind of what we wanted to, the podcast to be, was because when we would just hang out, we'd just hang out in the back, and we would just smoke the whole night, and then I'd do my set, and we'd just hang out, <laughs> you know? And then you get like Morgan, who's like a server, who's hilarious, and Jen, the manager. So it's like a rolling, you know, just, uh, I don't know, cavalcade of just... It's a carnival. It's just everyone, yeah. So cool. I mean, I Jesus. personally think the coolest part of the store is that little area. You just got a little Q-tip for me? Uh, yeah, I got you right here. Um, it reminds me of the Piano Man. Do you ever listen to that uh, Billy, is it Billy Joel? Billy, oh, the I mean, Billy I Joel song? the song because it's like you put it on at like a frat house or something <laughs> and everybody stops to sing it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know it outside of that context. It just sings about like uh, a bar and a guy that's playing piano and stuff. And it reminds me very much of like just the atmosphere of the store because there's like artists and everybody mm. and just the regulars and the bartenders. It just okay. it very much reminds me of uh, the store. <laughs> you need to give it another listen. Hilarious. <laughs> there was also a piano player. I think you met him maybe once. His name was Jeff Scott. Um, he passed away during the pandemic, but he was like a big, big part of the store. I think um, I don't know if you saw it. There was a, a memorial, like a mural. It was like, I think it was like a really small placard, but it was uh, Jeff Scott's. They're going to do another one bigger and do his mm. name, but. R.I.P. Yeah. 
We used to get stoned a lot yeah. back there. That was like one of the first things you told me, like going to the store. It was like you're like always get Jeff in the rotation. Oh yeah, you have to respect always, Jeff yeah. Scott. And it was like ever since I was like, yeah, no, no matter yeah, what, absolutely. make sure he gets a joint. Yeah, he was a he was a character. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Um, My favorite oh, thing was like when I found out that I mean like he's always like big ha- on Halloween, but like he was a Pee Wee Herman impersonator. Yeah. For a while and like stellar, like killed yeah. it. He was on the um, he was on the movie poster. For the Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. I didn't know that. That's yeah, yeah, fucking it was pretty awesome. wild. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really cool. What a wild claim to fit. Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, mm-hmm. impersonator. It was so wild to see, especially just being as a guy that like, or not a guy, but being a kid that came to the store and then was there for so long. He was the piano player, but then you realize he became like, he was like the historian, and then he also started working with Mitzi when he was like in his twenties. So he was there doing like the prior era, the Eddie Murphy era, uh, oh. the Jim Carrey. So we got to see it all, and he played oh. piano for all of them. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, R.I.P., man. Yeah, yeah. I uh, totally forgot how we got on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At the <laughs> store, smoking yeah. weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's, the, so here's the funny thing about him. Um, when we would, so when you would become a paid regular, he'd play you up, and then he'd play you up, and then he would be like, all right, I'm not going to be back until another 13 minutes, because all he had to do was play the comics on. Mm-hmm. So he would just go in the back and just get really, really stoned. Fire. And we would just smoke weed and stuff, and I think we got him to hit the puffco a few times. For sure. Yeah. No, more, than, more than likely. Yeah. Are there right any, like, if you could say on here, like, classic stories of things that have gone down there from people getting high? From people getting high? Absolutely. Do you remember the Fury story? Yeah, it's so like one of our, our good buddies, Fury, like, it was, I had brought a rig that I had in my pocket, um, and we were sitting there just smoking, and I, I, I pulled it out of my pocket, I was like, yo, you want to take a dab? And, like, and he took a full dab, and he, like... Someone was like, after two or three dabs, someone was like, Fury, you're on 10. He's like, oh, fuck, I have a set tonight. And then I went up in the original room, and like, like he said, he was, went up laughing, came off, and was just like, dude, I felt like I was in a movie. Like, he's like, I bombed my ass off, but it was, I never felt so good. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, John okay. Capetta came to the store, and uh, we got super baked, and it was in the main room. It was the big room. And uh, we got super baked, and then I went up, and I just ate a dick in front of so many people. Oh, no. And I got off stage, and John was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, it's all right, man. No. Oh, bro, it was so great. And then, wow. um, yeah, that happens a lot. But it's Shout also, that's, that's the fun t- it's the fun part it's of always, the story. Yeah, it seems but like that's it's not so like bad. That's be. not like no. freaking out. I feel like, I mean... If you've been dabbing long enough, and you've get, like, especially if you're like, in, like I started in 2011, 12 ish, and there's like some first dabs that I've given out that are like, it, yeah, it's in my head of like, oh my God, these are the dangers of cannabis. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might panic a little too much. And yeah, yeah. Anyways, I, I wasn't sure if there was one of those juicy ones. There. Um, nothing crazy. I mean, we had That's someone this podcast, right? Yeah, we had someone on this podcast. It was uh, what was her name? Um. God, what was her name? Oh my God, I'm so I'm blanking on her name only because I'm stoned. Uh, is the it was, remember she did the podcast and was like, I've never dabbed. I don't smoke weed. I'd love to do it. I've been a fan of the podcast. She's a comic. She okay. came on. Was it we Alice? like, huh? Was it Alice Hamilton? No, 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 no. It was someone else. It was it was, the, it was the it was the Jewish girl, the comic. Remember when we were at? Anyways, very sweet girl. Okay. Um, so we got her uh, stone, and she was just like, uh, yeah, I'll take another dab. And by the end of it, we were just like kind of like we're slowly walking into it. But by the end of it, she was like, nah, man, hit me with that red. Like, give me that. Let's do it. And I was okay. like, okay. So she did it, and then she was like, I'm fine. And then 30 minutes into our next podcast, she calls us in the middle of the podcast. She was like, I made it down the block. I'm at a cafe eating, and I need you guys to drive me home. And I was like, oh, my God. That's that that's still pretty good yeah like, she was fine. she was like i got on the road and was like you know what i'm hungry and then i went to get food and then i couldn't move anymore and i was like that's so, so I, great. I i have one and it's it's the worst i've heard and the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me and like i have to preface this with this was a good cause to make things like the peak because when you torch somebody up a glowy, yeah, and they're like, yeah, I smoke weed, and they're really just smoking like a quarter gram joint every night at most, but they think that they're in there. Everyone so wants to be cool, man. I have to leave out a lot of details, but like I was professionally <laughs> working with somebody, like a, he didn't work for me or anything like that, but I was working with them, and we talk about some stuff. After we're done, I'm like, you know, would you like a dab? I was like, yeah, sure. I'm torching them up. That's how long ago this was. It's like a Hitman Dabachino and a highly educated titanium nail. Oh, okay. So like just to prep, like this is the time of like red hot dabs yep. and... 
there was a carb cap and stuff. And so I torch him up. And as I'm torching him, I'm like, do you dab? And he's like, oh, yeah, I dab. Gave me that quick, like, <laughs> don't you worry, you're safe with me. Yeah. And so we give him the dab. And this is in Jersey, which I could, like, say now. Give him this dab. And he just uh, cap it, exhales a ton, you know, hot one. And he just sits there for a minute. I'm like, we're at his office. He's not the owner. He works. <laughs> he works for a guy. So like the guy is there too. He seems pretty chill. He's not like a smoker or anything. And then after like a minute or two, we're like, so "How you doing, man? You okay?" And he's not saying a word. And we're getting a little bit nervous. Like, "Hey, bro, you all right?" And he's like, and just starts completely freaking. Like, I've never seen, like, if I said, like, we put a voodoo curse on him, you would believe we were capable of voodoo. And I'm in New Jersey, and, like, I've had an arrest in New Jersey. I'm fucking scared of, like, what's about to happen next? Yeah, yeah. Are they going to call an ambulance? What, the ambulance is going to come police? Like, I thought this guy dabbed. Like, there's nothing. Like, it's the same hit I took right after I gave it to him, but he's a complete newbie. There's, like, there's no blue, green, red, and white. Yeah. There's... Red, <laughs> red. <laughs> not only red, degrees. and then like it gets bad. We're like, he lays down on the floor. This is fucking crazy, and starts like shaking. And it's all like psychosomatic. Yeah. None of it. Nothing is physically yeah. happening to him, but like, yeah, panic and yeah. like doesn't know what he's doing. So I, I go with, I almost said the name, my contact that introduced me to to him. And I'm like, let's just go and get a Coca-Cola from the store. Like, this dude just needs sugar. Like, that should help it. And we go back and give him sugar. And, like, he's starting to do a little bit. And I'm like, we just want to call an ambulance. And I'm in the room like, this would be the first person to die of cannabis. <laughs> like, do not call 911. This would be the first ever. He just needs time and water and... Eventually, I'm like, dog, I can't sit this out with him. Like, I am very afraid of being in such an illegal state. And we left, and like, the guy, literally two hours later, totally fine, a bit embarrassed, you know? Like, and that, that to me is like the dangers of cannabis. Like, you take a high ass dose, you might panic and embarrass yourself. Yeah. Like, the th yeah. Really bad. Yeah, I hope yeah. he never Been sees there. this. Hilarious. Really see this. At oh, the God. store that's happened, because people will come from out of town, and they'll come, they'll like smoke weed, they'll eat a bunch of edibles, and they'll be like, I want to go see a show, and then they'll start drinking. So we've had people like pass oh, out in yeah, shows. Yeah, that's the worst. By the way, I have to say, Puffco products, never seen anyone come even close to that level <laughs> of anything. You know, like we uh, make yeah. our products to be within the zone that like most people, you know, their worst Wanna case be. scenario is, yeah, yeah. hey, dude, I got the munchies. Can you drive me home? Like that's yeah, yeah. totally reasonable. But speaking in tongues and <laughs> spazzing out one of your boss and client. Is, well, yes. no, man, the, yeah. the smoke volume with the new Ryan Fit and the 3D chamber, like I've gotten pretty scary high. I was like, oh, that felt like I literally just took, I took a dab. Yeah, it can, I mean, listen, it's the pro, right? Like, it's our flagship model. We, we try to get it to really give people with the expectation of dabbing, of like, I'm chucking vapor, I'm getting really high from this. We try to make it for that. Now that we have, like, the proxy and different things, we can really stage it out for people of mm -hmm. how to enter and have the best experience. But it's the same shit as anyone else, you know? Like, if, if somebody's like, yo, do you pouring you a big, big shot of, I don't really drink, let's say Everclear or something, yeah. or Moonshine. And you're like, yo, you drink, right? Like, you've had Moonshine before, and they're like, yeah. And they slam it, and next thing you know, they're like drooling and passed out. It's the same risk with cannabis of like, just approach it as something that can make you uncomfortable if you're not making sure it doesn't. Um, yeah, there's definitely times where you can catch yourself off guard. Where, yeah. I mean, when you're too high, like, uh, I think I told you that the other night that I bombed mm. upstairs in the yes, belly room. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you Were you too high for that set? Do you think you got super stoned? And went up no, there? I think I was too high <laughs> and everyone was and also too else. drunk Amazing. and too high and it was just, no one, it was 1245 at night, no one wanted to be I'm there. Out. Yeah, I was like, listen, yeah. And it was, whew, it was rough. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, you do you still get, uh, you don't get like crazy. Oh yeah. Like, you still get panicky? Oh my God. So it never happened, my whole life, like I thought that wasn't a thing. Like why do old heads always like have a pinner and take three pulls and pass it to you and they're like, I'm good, I'm good. 
And sure enough, I turned like 33, I think. And I took a little bit of distillate, like 50 milligram edible. And it was the first time I had true panic from cannabis where I'm like, oh, I'm in Brooklyn. And I'm like, oh my God, imagine if I had a heart attack and I have cannabis. It's always those in intrusive my... thoughts. Yeah. I'm like, I have cannabis in my place. If I have a heart attack, I should be outside. I should have the heart attack outside so they don't go inside of my place. Like, <laughs> All of these thoughts, the next thing I know, I'm like looking at my girlfriend, I'm like, I think, I think I'm having a heart attack. She's like, you're not having a heart attack. You're panicked. Like, she just gave me, you know, some sugar and yes. some water and it was fine. But now that, that's on the spectrum of experience for me. It happened during COVID where I smoked a fat ass joint and like, I panicked and I was like, I feel like I'm on a slow motion plane crashing where it's like happening over a large amount of time and I just get to sit here and think about this impending crash. And now I've just like learned it as a part of what the experience can be for me. So like, yeah, I get there and then I'm like, oh yeah. This I'm is that panicky panic part. Yeah, yep. this, is, this is what it is for a minute and yep. I just like ride it out. Or if I really focus on something crazy, I'll be like, all right, I gotta think about that when I'm sober. Like yeah. I could just be tripping for no reason or maybe I did say some dickhead shit today. Um, but that is a part of my experience now. And when I was in my twenties, I felt like I could just smoke all day. Worst case scenario, I'm passing out or it stops being effective. Like I just yeah. can't get any higher, but now I panic like a little bitch sometimes, but I keep it inside. I swear. I, I swear our girlfriends know each other or know each other. Cause uh, my wife says the exact some of our girlfriends now, hilarious. Sorry. Yeah, my right. side piece and my wife. No, <laughs> uh, I call my wife, my girlfriend sometimes. Does that mean I love her? All right. Anyways, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, my I, I'll say that to my wife, where I'll be like, I, I'm panicking. I think I'm having a heart attack, mm. and she'll straight up just be like, "You're not having a heart attack. You're just an idiot." Not yeah. that I'm an idiot, but you're yeah, like, but no, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. just this like, again. this yep. is like the five hundredth time. Yeah, yeah. This happened yesterday. She's like, "Why <laughs> yeah. is it always at eleven o'clock?" Yeah, after exactly. This hour. Yeah, man. I mean, it's um, it's okay now. I feel like it was something. Now it happens. To, I, I've gotten it down to the point of. When I do a live and it's like one that's like 40 minutes, a short one, but I took, I chiefed and I took like six or seven dabs, which happens. I'll get off and I'll be like, I need like 30 minutes of just doing nothing and just sitting with this fucking high and you just get through it. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I enjoy cannabis more than that. Like panic negatively affects. Absolutely. Me, so. Absolutely. Um, you just scared every night. Do you want to get into the first one? Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. I might have some in here. Oh, yeah, I already got one loaded, Perfect. but... You want to give the breakdown of this first one while I load I'll it up? I'll this. So yeah, I'll clear it through in here for now. That one's going to be the, uh, the Sherb Williams from uh, Grown by Valley Grove. It's uh, Sunset Sherbert and uh, Wilson, actually. Uh, for that one, the taste is, is a lot of that Sherbert. It's that sweet, creamy um, kind of smoke. Um, but this cut of Wilson, it's Wilson is a uh, banana OG crossed with papaya, then crossed with chopped cookies. Um, cool. So the, the Wilson, the, the seems that these guys have, the, the Valley Grove, mm -hmm. uh, their fino is super banana, but it's almost like green banana. Like it's like sure. almost unripe banana. Um, so the flavor we'll get on that is going to be like that kind of, uh, like I said earlier, that creamier uh, kind of sweeter sherbet. Um, but then you're going to get like that unripe banana flavor really kind of lingering in your mouth after. Sick. I mean, but Valley that, that, Grove is incredible. Yeah, 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 I've had their stuff before. And that banana, that banana flavor comes like 45 seconds after your exhale. Like it's really all sherbet, all sherbet. And then hmm. it's like the way it attacks the top of your mouth. Um, it really kind of hits it with that banana flavor. <laughs> Plus the sherbet high is, is, is one of my favorites. <coughs> that Alex was just talking about earlier as well. It's just like that kind of really nice uh, relaxing without being super psychoactive, but still has the nice, you know, mild euphoric changes to it. Um, and it's just nice and chill. Because they'll be social. Right, nice. Give this uh, a spin. What's it called again? Uh, it's going to be a Sherb Williams. Sherb Williams. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. What I is mean, um? Ooh, what uh? Nice. Ooh, what's your first uh, question you got? First question on that one. Frank, bacon is a glorified condiment. <coughs> Agree or disagree? <coughs> yeah, absolutely. You could wait. <coughs> wait. 
too glorified, <laughs> as in like it's it, just a condiment. It has too I much. I don't think it's that special. <laughs> no, I think it's very special. No, I think it's just a condiment, bro. You can throw it anything. <laughs> oh, I mean, isn't that? I mean, I guess. Oh, god damn it! It's a, it's always in the condiment thing when you go to order food online. Do you want to add bacon for a dollar? It's a condiment, dog. <laughs> they really have made it to where bacon is now a condiment on everything. Yeah. <laughs> damn it! I guess you're right. Because <laughs> I, I don't get it with just by I guess itself. I should have waited to argue until after Roger went with. Hilarious. <laughs> so, I mean, one, yeah, it is hilarious that, like, Americans have made bacon a condiment. Um, so I actually have, like, a good line in my life, as weird as it is, of what is and what is not a condiment. Um, Chelsea, wow. Chelsea Puffco hates condiments. Ketchup, mustard, any of it. Doesn't want it on her food, throw away a sandwich, hope I'm not saying too much. She eats a fuck ton of bacon. So like, I would say if Chelsea considers it a condiment, it's a condiment. If not, it's its own thing. So not condiment. Hell yeah. But, close. <laughs> well, I guess what makes a condiment? It's something that you add to your food to make it better. But like, as an addition after it's been made. Are pickles a condiment? Yeah. Yes, by that logic, yes. But in general, like, are they called a condiment? I don't think so. Well, I mean, do people just, are there any dishes where there's just a solid pickle? By the way, this is what most of the podcast is. <laughs> yeah. this, is what, this is what the podcast this is. This is great at, <laughs> This is the podcast at the crux of what it is. I would is. call it a fixin'. Like pickles. <laughs> pickles are a fixin'. Bacon could be a fixin', but... Condiment? I think condiment's got to be... Now we're just getting cultural. No, I'm just gonna... <laughs> Spreadable, you know? Damn. Bro, you, we, I asked you to write simple questions, Oops. not ones that are going to break deep. reality. <laughs> I was ordering lunch, and I was like, why is bacon always in the... In the <laughs> Damn, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a condiment. <laughs> uh, the next question... Or next thing. Uh, Frank recently introduced us to a uh, college boy cheesesteaks, and everyone we brought there who's from Philly or from around Philly gives it like the stamp of approval. Is there a spot out here that you give like the New York stamp of approval? <coughs> Ooh. Whether it's the chopped cheese or like whatever. Oh man. Um, I think the answer is no. Like, there's good pizza. It's a very in LA. New York answer. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> it's just different. Like. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. There's good. Just like. There's no shot of getting any decent taco anywhere in New York City. It's just like, it doesn't exist. Hmm. It, it, look it up. Look, go check the Instagram of any friend who's like, no, no, no. There's one good taco spot in New York. Go and check it. You're going to make this is crazy. How, could, how, how would you even think that? <laughs> it's kind of the same thing here with Italian food. Great. I've been to great Italian food spots. Awesome pizza. But like New York is, they're not even trying. And the food is incredible. So I would say, like, no. And pizza is probably my jam. If there's anything, it's kind of lame now. But there's, there was this, we called it Vendor when I was a kid. I've been going there since I was 16 years old. There's a little street corner halal spot. We would wait for an hour, an entire hour at least. Drive, like, hella long to get there. And get just, like, this pulled chicken with rice and like salad and white sauce and hot sauce. Fucking incredible. Been going there for 20 years. That place ended up being fucking halal, guys. Yeah, I was like, that's And it was like spot. this one spot on one corner in New York City, and then it took over both corners, same block, and then it just started spreading. And then a decade to 15 years later, it's like everywhere. And they have one here, and yeah. I got it here, and I would say it's as good as in New York. I think overall quality has gone down a little bit, but. Yeah. That's it. Pizza wise, it's great pizza in LA. Not, not even not shitting even on it. Yeah, I mean, in, there are so many New York spots to go to. It's fucking crazy. See, man, New York. It's the thing that I hate about getting older is now that I've hit my thirties, acid reflux is a thing that happens to me so much, mm -hmm. now, especially when I eat pizza. It used to never happen to me, and I'd watch my wife suffer through it, and I'd be like, man, thank God that it's not me. And now, if I just smell a pepperoni, it's bad. Yeah, I'm not even doing like. I cut out pork and other stuff as well, but pizza's a treat. Like, that used to be something where when I was living in New York, man, I could just smash half pie in a night easy. You know, whole pie, if it's like you ordered at 5 p.m., that thing's getting smashed by 12 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and now I, my whole day is ruined. Like the next day, yeah. I'm in. Incapa- it, it's yeah, man, getting old sucks. Yeah, it fucking does. That's like, why this episode's brought to you. But no, uh, <laughs> Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol. <laughs> Shit. I was just to say, like, I love the uh, my favorite thing with New York pizza is always like just the pepperoni cups. There's a lot less of them out here. Like the mm. double cooked pepperoni, and so it pools up, and the he oil was the one kind that of got me soaks that. in there. Yeah, there's only a couple spots out here that do was that. Was Brooklyn? That I'm like, not Brooklyn. Uh, Prince Street. Prince Street, Prince Street is known yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. That. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. no, 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 bootleg, bootleg, bootleg also. Bootleg too. Yeah, yeah, bootleg. yeah. man, yeah. bootleg. That's like a southern spot, right? Is it? Wasn't that bootleg like... pizza? They were at Puffcon. Wait, what's their name again? Bootleg pizza. Bootleg. I might be thinking of two boots. They do like some two gnarly shit. They do like a. Um, a pizza that's uh, like a hamburger pizza. So it has like mm. ground beef and then French fries and like Thousand Island over it. That's like, a lot for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I would try them. I didn't realize they were a PuffCon. I think yeah. I saw them cool. there, yeah. And then uh, they also had the, the tacos. Fuck. I forgot. Like one of the best taco stands out of PuffCon too. Let's look them up too. That's like the biggest bummer of PuffCon for me is like I'm, wa- I'm always trying to watch my shit and not overindulge. And I just need to so do hard. it at PuffCon because yeah, everything there is a fucking Dude, hair. everything was great. Like, so you try the good. burgers? Yeah. What? Hot chicken, there, I mean, every plate I had there, there was a, I forgot what nationality spot it was, but they were selling, like, curry chicken, and blew my mind, like, curry chicken roti. I just can't wait. Yeah, shout out to PuffCon, October, October 1st? I think so. I think so. so yeah, yeah. Yeah, about that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, October yeah, yeah. 1st. <laughs> it's just. It's like that <laughs> or the 6th, one of those. I don't know. I think I looked at it earlier. First week of October. <laughs> <laughs> just Google PuffCon and it'll be. Man, it'll you're, come you're up. like me with my own stand up dates. I'm just like, I am this. It's happening somewhere. at some point. Yeah. There's a lot of things to remember, man. You can't remember them all. I got things coming up. Sure. <laughs> uh, all right, we should. Uh, all right, how much? What time are we at? God, I'm so lit. I can already tell. Uh, 7.30. I, I'm at the, how much time have we done? Oh, it is 7.30. We start at 7. Oh, 30 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Damn it, hey, we haven't even done that much. It's only been a few dabs. I know, yeah. I know, I know. It's we did a little bit before. <laughs> All right, let's load it up for the second round. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we still have two more to get through, right? Yeah, We're I love. There. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, we got. <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be fucked. I'm gonna be <laughs> boop, boop, uh, by the end of the episode. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> don't do that, guys. Please. Oh no, I'm horrified that I even told that story. <laughs> Disclaimer: That should almost never happen yeah, with a Puffco product. Once like, in you a got, blue moon. <laughs> Just different time. That was what, man, like um, eight who, years ago. Yeah, dude. Uh, my co- it's. I have a cousin who's one of my favorites. His name's Joe. I should, probably shouldn't say the rest of his name. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he was the one that got me. I had two cousins that also got me into smoking weed, but he was my other cousin that, like, I guess, how do I say it? Like, as I started smoking more weed, we both found out he smoked weed and I smoked weed, and then he was just kind of like a big Big cousin, like, sure. you know, cousin, yeah. like, showing me cool weed. And then now I'll show him shit, and he's gotten uh, to meet a lot of my cooler friends that are, like, you know, up in the Bay now. And um, anyways, long story short, he started doing dabs, mm. and he got to smoke some, like, underground hash, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, there yeah. You and uh, they dabbed him out. And uh, my friend, who's I met at comedy shows, and now they do stuff together, uh, he sent me pictures of my cousin like passed out on the couch Hilarious. he was like i gave him he was like he's gonna be cool dude and i was like yeah he's gonna be fine he was like i gave him one dab dog that was it oh my god bro, they're was, hitting you up to make sure he's like okay and stuff. yeah dude it was so funny bro it was just great and it just feels good to be like yeah man now now the table how the how the turntables have turned that you're the one getting put to sleep because of weed you know because i he was that guy to you yeah like, i'd fucking pass one. out because i'd be like oh you know hash is uh Hash can be powerful, man. I would say, espe- like, especially hot dabs. Hot dabs do something to you. It's almost like its own other thing. When you're taking a glowy, it still happens to me. Like, when, when somebody, I'll take a slurper hit a few times a year. Like, somebody will beg, would you mind, would you mind hitting this? And it's always a friend who gets a kick out of seeing me dab. And they almost always let me go in a little too hot. I've even tried to like wait five to 10 seconds after they say go and still they're getting me in. Yeah, man, you're like tweaking. Yeah. You yeah. are fucking tweaking. Well, it's, it's, it's like it attacks your central nervous system almost. So everything just like, yeah, oh, shit. you, um, you used to ninja dab me with the first All the time. Yeah. 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 
It's called Love, Frank. That's not, <laughs> that's not gonna hurt anything. That was no. a great time. Was you guys a, ever see like the reverse ninja dab where somebody that? drops in a Q tip as soon as you lay yours down so it sucks everything up? <laughs> no, but uh, it's a, he might. He might see it soon. If hash is abundant, you know, like if, if you're not if you're not paying for it yourself. That's kind of fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of hilarious. Uh, was it uh, Tony smokes too much? The, that gentleman? Uh, yeah, he uh, collects a lot of glass. Um, when I saw him at Jimmy's party last time, mm. he uh, hit me with the slurper. And, uh, yeah, I didn't realize, that, like, what, is the slurper just something that not It's just, it's just like, increased airflow for everything. People not like hit it like, often? Yeah, just the, the, the smoke volume get is gnarly. Oh, okay. And people always they're, ask they're, me to hit it, and then I will, and then like I get They're more expensive for, like, nicer ones, too, so they're okay. not as common. Oh, my God, yeah. They're, yeah. E- they can easily be, like, a 1000 bucks to get a new one. I actually almost wanted to, I love, I love trying any new dab tech and they just dropped a new slurper. I saw it. This is a good reminder to see if I can get one, but you take a really chesty hit. So like a slurper, I would say <clears throat> hits like a bomb and you're just chucking vapor. It's, it's a lot at once. And listen, there's a whole scene around people that are chasing that. Like most I can get in one moment. Um, yeah. yeah, I like that one. If I'm playing video games and I got nothing else to do for a day, I'll do a fucking crazy choker. What's the new, what's the next this one? This one's going to be the uh, animal juice. You like. This one's actually one of my favorites. Uh, it's it's granimals times garlic juice. Uh, the granimals is grape pie and animal cookies, and the garlic juice is uh, GMO papaya. Um, it is straight grape pie and papaya off the rip. It's going to be sweet, sweet berry um, from that grape, and then just a little bit of stone fruit funk, stone fruit funk from that papaya in there. Um, you're gonna get that, and then on the exhale, the uh, animal cookies in the granimals adds a nice little gas to the end, and it like plays with the funk of the papaya, and that that taste is what kind of sits in your mouth after. It's really nice. One of my favorites. But I'm I'm a fucking huge grape pie fan. But I also like I also used to love blackberry Kush. Like I love the berries. Blueberry. Is that the only berry to, you know? Blueberry, blackberry. Let's name two of them. Poisonberry. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, blackberry Kush from back. Blackberry it had that like it was a great bag appeal. It was always tested low, but it had that, <laughs> that berry flavor, but the Afghan and it added this nuttiness to it that some batches would smell like peanut butter and jelly. I haven't had Just blackberry so kush in good. so long. It used to be like somebody broke it down for me years ago where they were like, it has a lot of stalks for trichomes, but not heads. Yeah, that makes so sense. So it's just something that looks completely Beautiful. white, but isn't packing a punch It's like, like a very similar, like, looking strain now is Oreos. I've seen a lot. Where it's, like, this beautiful, like, beautiful-looking nug, but there's not much there. It's supposed to affect even. What does this go for on rack uh, shelves? On the, on the <laughs> shelf, uh, 65 before tax. <coughs> closer to 80. 65 to what? Before tax. Before tax. For their tier okay, one, cool. yeah. It's pretty good. Find it at Buds and Roses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are, what are these snacks? I'm very gonna, curious. Yeah, talk to me before that. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love buds and roses. Finally, buds and roses. Um, these snacks, I should probably do my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to do my job. <laughs> uh, no, no, he said I should just do my job. <laughs> cause I, I was literally just like, I'm hungry. And then I was like, oh, yeah, these fucking snacks. Um, these are uh, sumo snacks. They're, how do you describe them? They're one of the first, uh, there are a couple other companies, but one of the first um, savory medicated snack on the market, essentially. Uh, they have like, I think it's five different flavors. Um, the classic cheese, the fiery hot, uh, and then mm-hmm. they have like the tortilla oh, rounds, okay. like salsa verde, uh, cool ranch, uh, zesty ranch, like Doritos, uh, oh. and then uh, lime. I actually will eat the, uh, like we'll get Chipotle at the shop and I'll just eat a bag of lime with my Chipotle. And these fucking hot Cheeto ones do not fucking play. It is dangerous. How interesting. Yeah, they're stellar. Oh man, I need this for, uh, <laughs> for my next in US flight. Yeah, you should definitely take some bags. Yeah, we got a couple of them. Wow, haven't seen that before. And I'm really enjoying them. Then like they they started with 10 milligram bags, uh, but then they recently kicked it up to these 100 milligram bags, and like it, it's perfect. 10 milligram bags? That yeah. whole bag would there be 10 used milligrams? to be. Yeah. But no, yeah. so they weren't that big though. They were like probably oh, okay. uh, like, like quarter like, of a size, like probably. snack bags. Oh yeah, but now I got to eat like a pillow to get a decent yeah. high. I mean, if you're like going yeah. for that, yeah. Yeah. that's I mean, why I like the 20, 30 milligrams like works for me these days. Yeah. It's same thing with me. Yeah. I used to be able to like put away the like. Speaking of like. Punch, punch extracts. They used to be like punch edibles, right? They still do. I think they used to have like 200 milligram bars. They, this they, is way back in like the days. They used to be 225s. 
What was it? They were 225s. 225s, yeah. yes. And, back and I think higher than that as well. And I used to be able to put away one of those 225s. No problem. You know, like I might fall asleep. Now I'd like, I'd be having a full blown. That's life. what we'd do at the start of the show. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I would deck 100. And that was actually kind of, I wouldn't mind it. But also, like, you just get weird after the show. You know what I mean? Well, now, they just, also, now they have them, they're made with hash now. Yeah. They, um, they, so now they're fucking nice. Yeah. That's yeah. great. The distillate ones I can't do anymore. I also, the worst part of edibles for me is how much you eat. Yeah. I'm like a dumpster. <laughs> when, Dude, the, the, at, the I munchies I get off of edibles is unlike anything Bro, else. I've I have ever eaten had. 60 gummies before. I. Like, like, what? The only times I've ever <laughs> thrown up from overeating is because of edibles. Whoa, never got myself there. Two Damn. times. And that was only because it was just like, I'm so, I just love the sensation of eating. <laughs> I'm so high. There's no stopping you. I would say the combination of not edibles, but like being high in mushrooms is oh. on, poor, on, on par or higher for me. Yeah. Of just, I can't stop eating. Everything is so good. Especially fruits. I can eat like... Yeah. Buckets of fruit. Anyways. Well, I feel like mushrooms, like, I've, I've had times where I have microdose and I like, go out to eat and everything, where, like, your flavor, like, sensors, like, kick way up. You taste things way better than you ever would have before. Mm, sure. I don't know. Maybe the same thing, like, with weed, where you're like, oh, this is just the best food I've ever had. But, like, we, like, went out for some crazy tacos after. It was like, yo, this is the best carne asada taco yeah. ever. Yeah. It was a taco. It wasn't anything fucking it's, special. But, but it was goddamn when it hits, the best yeah, one I ever had right yeah. then and there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the, which spot? Where, where, there's a taco spot off of. There's this taco spot in. Uh, it's off of Santa Monica and La Brea, in front of the public storage parking lot, attached right. to the gas station. And it's literally just this family, and they bust out like, the truck, and they like make homemade tortillas and everything. I think I took you there, right? Yeah, every I time finally take you there. Gone, it's closed. Really? Yeah. Oh no. Well, it's because I always take you there at like, <laughs> two After thirty in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, but it's such a dope spot. That's my favorite thing I think about LA is like I used to never really fuck with like food trucks, but now it's like, dude, the, we've there's so many. I've never had trouble ones. with food trucks. LA food scene is. I just is never, yeah, never had the. Pretty good. There's like I don't want to say too much. I mean, I doubt anybody who could get them in trouble would hear it, but there's like this family that I think was like a cook and a waiter, and the pandemic happened. And so, like, they couldn't work and they just kind of opened up their backyard for just family and friends. And now that shit is still running. It's like a, it's like a Oaxacan spot. It is. I gotta take you there. One time. Is that the one that was on? Uh, no, it's not, on, it's no, not around them out. Uh, <laughs> these, these are hardworking people trying to make a living. Well, um, if it was that one, it was they put it on. It's on Complex Tacos oh. Contolos. No, no, no. Who went no, to it's not. Yeah. It's it's not that one. But anyways, I, I that's like the coolest part of the food scene to There's me. In LA a, is like I think you met him. There's a comic named Stephen Fury. Um, mm. He was at the drive-in show and a few other times. I'd, um, next time I'll show, or next time I see him, I'll introduce you to him. Yep. But he's like a fucking foodie. Mm. And same thing. There's a place in like Long Beach or some shit like that. Like uh, just um, all the longshoremen, they just uh, want someone's like house or some shit. They just, you know, everyone comes, works. And so they just cook for like his friends. And then eventually he started sure. cooking for everybody. And it's like bomb ass food. <coughs> but it's all the stuff off the grill, like burgers and shit. Just regular stuff shit. off the grill. Is this, is this not, is this not universal sign for grill? <laughs> Is this not how everyone grills? I mean, that was like... Uh, is this not improving for grills? <laughs> 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 it does look like I'm jerking anyone. Right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, Ellie's full of it. There's like a... I heard of a spot. I never went there, but Burgers Never Say Die. I think that was like... Yes, a, I've heard that. And that just started in somebody's like garage or something, and then they yeah. just grew out of there. But that's... I don't know. It's a fire part of LA that like people just make food because they love it, and then like the demand creates a business... I feel like, yeah, that's, that's not the case. And then places. corporations take it. No, and then... <laughs> really, social media has also helped them, like, explode. You know what I mean? They're yeah, like, social they're, like, media really has helped places. Yeah, that's my ass. Instagram knows, like, oh, you're a fat ass yeah. in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm show you what's around. Like, it, it, Instagram has me... Yeah, TikTok, back. for me, is just all food spots and then just uh, people hurting themselves. Like, you know, not like... That's that sounded oh, so weird. Like That's a, yeah, 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 like them, yeah. like you know, like running into shit or like animals, like the guy with the bobcat. That sounded really dark when I said it. <laughs> that was not <laughs> what I. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what the no, no, no. fuck? Let me before the podcast. Frank was like, I really love videos of truckers getting in car accidents, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then watch them for the next ten minutes. Jeez, I meant yeah. like so. There was a video of a trucker who was just driving. 
and uh, there was a it was a video that get, it was it, I feel like it went viral. The trucker was driving, and the guy's like he's recording, and he was like uh, he was like we he's like there's been signs for two miles saying that two lanes are turning into one, and this guy's gonna start to try to overtake me right now. And then like the guy just starts driving up, and he was just like I'm not gonna slow down and then you see him just start hitting like uh the bumpers the, the, yeah, the, the, the things, water yeah. things and then you see him start to like signal signal over and he was just dying laughing and uh, i don't know whose side i'm supposed to be on yeah <laughs> I, I think that like people would side with the trucker i think like like the law would but also i've would. been the guy who's tried to, tried to like like definitely tried to oh, like do like risk they'd probably get in trouble for uh like reckless driving oh yeah yeah, yeah i don't yeah. think you'd get in trouble because they were definitely speeding also so you oh, do all that all shit right. and you got it on camera fuck them you look like a, <laughs> yeah. you look like a truck driver too jay but yeah love thanks man <laughs> fuck you too <laughs> hilarious mm. what uh you got next question Roger, what movie set in the future has the future you hope we end up in? What movie set in the future? Have, wow, that's such a big, <laughs> big question. Um, man, I, that, it's like heavy for me because I'm hell into like sci-fi yeah. and other shit. And, and that's like a big one. Um Man, it, it would not, it would not have like police as the protagonist mm -hmm. or like understandable like harm. Like I watch movies these days. I don't know if I'm just like super aware, but I'm like, that guy probably had a fucking family. He just randomly killed this random person just because you needed something for. Anyways, <laughs> I'm like now I like, just be watching it, high over analyzing it. I don't know what movie set in the future. I mean, I guess everything is possible. This is so tough, dude. <laughs> I mean, like, so like, is it sci-fi? Is it? For me, it's Wally. It's Wally. Aren't all the humans We're all dead? dead. We're gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're all fat and on a spaceship somewhere else, right? Isn't that the movie? Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot they oh, okay. survived. I forgot. I thought I fucked up. I was just no, like, no, are no. We all that's dead? the one. That's the one. I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm sorry. I don't know, like have a great answer here. There's like so much, I'd say like that movie, like Annihilation, right? Have you seen Annihilation? Oh yeah, that was actually, that was pretty wild. It was wild, but imagine if it was like positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it that way. Like what if <laughs> Annihilation happened and we all just went through this like psychedelic transformation, but it was all like super fire and heady where we like, lost our individuality in a positive way. We're all well, like, they, that's also one of the things in, in science fiction where it, where they call it the singularity, right? Is where it's like at some point, like all of consciousness, like uh, everyone leaves their body and they go to like one thing or something. Like so, they do. See, I think singularity is like the moment that you can't predict beyond. Is I that think that's it? like, I think that's when everyone says singularity, it's like this one moment happens and then everything after that you can't see. So it's like Ray, again, I'm like a sci-fi kind of Ray Kurzweil, some guy's like trying to live forever. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the first hundred and fucking fifty year old. I think he or whatever has said the singularity is this moment you can't see beyond of like, we know things can go here, but after that, we don't fucking know. It's the singularity. I could have that totally fucked up. No, no, that makes sense. Cause then it's like, you know, it's like, uh, I think they did it in Neon Genesis. It was like uh, all the like souls combine and then move on to the next phase of whatever humanity is. That's like, uh, did you guys watch Westworld? Yeah, I love Not Westworld. Yet. Have you been watching this? I haven't. I watched like two episodes of the new season. I was like, I got to restart this shit over, dog. I'm getting Yo, fucked. This season is probably my favorite. And I'm going through this like whole thing that has me being like, yeah, that's just what humans are. And apart, without trying to ruin it, it's like they, all these things are just a part of some AI. All these like things in Westworld are a part of another thing that is just like an AI running, learning people. But they have their individuality, but their individuality is pointless because they're just like yes. part of a bigger machine. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the real thing expressing itself and learning through these things. And I'm like, it's so weird that they would want to do that. Oh yeah, that's right. That's like what humans are. It trips me out. I just love getting. Do you watch the original Westworld? Stuff. No, the one from way back. Oh, it's weird. 
I bet. I feel like it would just ruin this one for me. Like, this is what I, you based it on. I just remember watching it as a kid, being like, "What the fuck?" Like, it was like I, you guys got to stop letting me watch sci-fi. Sci-fi was a little bit different back in the day, dude. Yeah. Outer Limits, uh, Twilight Zone. Outer Limits was crazy. All that shit. I was definitely like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, there was a few episodes that I was really like. Uh, this changed me as a person. Like, <laughs> I uh, agree. Uh, uh, it is I too agree. late at night. I am nine or yeah, however nine. young version of me is. And it is just I remember it was rough. like the one that did it to me. It's the, I probably can't remember a single Outer Limits episode. But there was this one where this like old fat guy was like into a pair of twins. And like it was it was very monkey's paw, right? Outer Limits like, oh, you want this thing? You want to date twins? This is what could happen. And they both were deeply in love with him. And like the final scene is cutting where they just split him in half. And he's just laying there with like dead with both of them. And I had to be like nine years old watching this. Like, what is happening? <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah. It was I, for different for time. me, it was the fucking Twilight Zone episode where the, la the lady or the guy's in the hospital the whole time. And he's, it just shows him the entire time. He's wearing gauze all over his face. Uh, and then at the very end, the episode, they have them unwrap the gauze, and they're, like, worried they're going to look super ugly, but they're normal. <laughs> and it pulls back, and all the doctors are, like, weird looking or whatever. It scared the fuck out of me as a kid. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. There was, like, weird aliens. Like, it was freaky. Yeah, yeah that one in the, I think the, the people with no mouths. That was weird. On Twilight Zone. That's a burned image in my mind. With the, with the kid that's, like, that, uh, there, there's one where, like, the kid controls everything. Where he was, like, the, like, supreme, he was, like, he was like God, basically. Like, and all the parents were, uh, all the family was one. just like, "Don't piss him off," you know what I mean? And then, like, you know, he's 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 like, I think it zooms out. He's like playing with a dollhouse, and it's like all these people that are like, like, you know, that shit was fire. Yeah, that shit was, was so just, good. I remember, they got to like. Remember that. that one? I might have to run that tonight. Did you guys yeah. see the new uh, Twilight Zone? No, I, I saw the first episode. I think it was, that was good. About it, yeah, I thought it was. I I remember watching it like twenty twenty. And I got like a CBS fucking subscription for it. So like it was good enough for me to spend, you know, 10 bucks for yeah. a month to watch it. But yeah, fire. I got to check that one. So good. Uh, what's the next, uh, you want to jump into the next flavor? Sure. How are we doing on time? Perfect. I'm getting so good at telling time now. Yeah, man, took... you just asked the guy in the corner. <laughs> 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 oh, man, I'm so good at uh, just, you know, even asking <laughs> questions. <laughs> Ooh, damn. This one's some peel out. Uh, this one I was, I was really curious about, just the name alone, uh, peel out. And Alex and I were talking about it. Uh, we think it's because it's a motor breath cross, so it's like peeling out. Uh, it's, it's a banana punch and motor breath. Um, again, going back mm. to that banana OG um, common theme for today. Um, but that sweet banana flavor um, all the way Thanks. through. Uh, this one, when you smell it, uh, it's a motor breath being a chem uh, cross. The, the unripe banana really does come through in this one a lot in mm. the smell. Um, as far as flavor, uh, you get a little bit of banana OG off the front, but then it's all chem and all SFE at the end. It's that really green, chlorophyll y kind of chem flavor. Hmm. I uh, forgot mine's still packed, so I got to clean this real quick. Uh... Oh, you got uh, you got a little bit left. No waste. No, nah, you know I can't. You know there's uh, there's non stone kids in uh, poor countries that you know what I mean that sure. aren't getting stoned right now. Yeah, and sure. this is this is for them, dog. There's comics everywhere. Wishing they could get stoned, Frank. <laughs> Man, when I was in North and South Carolina, that shit was, it wasn't rough, but as a stoner, it was very, like, it was rough. I um, we talked about it a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I have, like, a rule that I won't go to any state where I can land myself in jail for having weed. And yeah, 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 and that is, yeah, that is touring for Polly Shore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am just not scary. Uh, I have scary. accidentally smoked weed with so many law enforcement officers. Really? Yeah. We were in. Whoa! Uh, I gotta hear. Yeah, that's dude, we, what. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We were. We were in. Uh, Say it. We were in. Uh, it was Asheville, North Carolina, and yeah, um, let's hear it. it was at an let's old. Get some in trouble. It was at this old biker bar, and uh, he was. Uh, he was. I think he said he was the the owner of the biker bar, or the owner of the rock venue now, country rock venue, but it used to be like an outlaw biker bar, and it was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, this is crazy. Um, but 
you know, we were smoking weed afterwards and he was just like, you're really funny. He's wearing a cowboy hat and his cowboy boots and like an American t-shirt, like real fucking like on the nose shit. Right. And a uh, sweet guy. And then he goes, uh, I was like, you think it's going to be legal out here? Cause they had like weird Delta nine laws. Okay. And he was like, yeah, he was like, I think we're going to be able to make it, uh, legal out here you know i'm running for sheriff for this town so i think uh oh he's like i'm God. in the lead so i think we got it and i was just like <laughs> smoking weed with him like all right now it's also like you don't make the laws <laughs> yeah you, i was like mean, man, damn this place is wild awesome. i was like it was what? like, it was like that point, you just gave me mushrooms dog all right cool <laughs> oh, no. at that point do you feel more safe or less safe Cause more he's safe because like, he's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm the like the owner of the bar. I'm and, the guy to do and drugs. The guy with. who's gonna be sheriff. It's like I'm okay. And you're yeah, it's drugs. great to smoke weed with a guy that's supposed to arrest you. You know what I mean? Know, you're just like, like yeah. I don't want to go to jail, <laughs> so I'm gonna be cool. <laughs> Man, you make a bad joke and you just fucking. Right. Oh yeah, no, I'm trust me, I'm fucking quiet when we go out. Although I was telling him when I was doing some of the shows, there were some guys in like. Like thin blue line shirts, 1776 shoots, who were just like didn't Whoa. shake my hand or did not want to like Whoa. take pictures of me and stuff. It was were you like, making jokes? I mean, I teased like, them, and I also like you know I talk about having being in a racial relationship. You know what I mean? I'm sure. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking uh, you know. You're a problem. Uh, I'm an ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you call it? I said you're a problem, brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. Oh, some people after the show. I could tell they meant well, but they were like, you know, you know, it's not all about race. And I was just like, oh, you guys are drunk <laughs> and you guys want to talk to me about comedy and all this shit. Yeah, I'm good, dog. Like, ugh. <laughs> trying to connect or something. This is super tasty. Hell yeah. It's I really tasty. Just said it to John. John said he, that was the thing that uh, he thought really stood out was when I, I was like, there's nothing worse than uh, an, uh, an audience member who means well. <coughs> oh, no. <coughs> yeah, that's a trip to me. Being at the store, seeing, like, it must be an alcohol thing, but seeing how many people, people like, want to engage with the comedian obsessively, where it's just got to be so hard. That's also different, too, now, I think, ever since the quarantine, because... It used to not be like people used to just be like quiet and shut the fuck up uh, and just not be like, you know, shout over dicks or combative or whatever. But now ever since like everyone's back out, everything's more expensive. They feel like people already felt the sense of entitlement when they spend a lot of money on something, especially in comedy clubs and like positioning and posturing. It's so weird. Um, the dynamics of like people sitting, you know, and uh, yeah, so it definitely makes uh, a more odd environment. People like going on stage. You know, I had a drunk lady walk on stage at like, was you there for yeah, that? Yeah, I was there for that. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, what would she get mad at? It was a school shooting joke. Yeah, yeah it yeah. always oh is. Yeah. It always is. But yeah, it's no, a but good bit. Um, it's one of, it's one of my favorites. Over. It's, it's one it's, of my favorites. Yeah, it's a great bit. Uh, it's a dumb bit. And it's she just, just like dumb. stormed. Yeah, because it's just trigger words. Because because at the end of the day, people were always just like uh, they're upset that I'm talking about a real thing that's happening. But also, I just think it's ridiculous to give teachers guns because they don't get paid enough. That's sure. kind of the whole premise of the bit. Oh yeah. And then also, like my wife's mom was a teacher; she's retired now. But it's also the reality of the situation of like if you're a teacher who's been there for a long time, like there's definitely students you hate. So then it delves into the the realm of like you know, God forbid, stu you lost sure. students, you know, and it's like. You know, it's like, you know, fucking was one of those two. the one I hated the guy, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, I'd never outright say anything, but you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, hey, you know what I mean? and that's a dumb joke. And my wife's mom was the one who laughed at it and we both talked about it. And then uh, I started doing it and I run into teachers that are like, that's terrible. And I'm like, yeah, don't give them a gun. And then it's like, there's the teacher who's like, that's hilarious. And then I ask him, like, have you thought of any names? And then, like, they're like, no. You know, or they hold up sure. a finger. And then it's like, yeah, give that teacher a gun. Because that's the teacher who's, God forbid, something happens. Sure. You know what I mean? You I want mean, them give to. give teachers more money, not guns. Of course. Of course. But I agree. Yeah. The one <laughs> of course. At the end, of, that's what the sure. argument. So, like, when I'm doing stand up, it's like, I don't, I'm trying, I, I'm already on the side of, like, they don't get paid enough. You know what I mean? And sure. that's the whole premise of the bit. And yeah. then. Yeah, it's like, you I don't take think... it personally. Yeah. It's weird, man. I mean, there's like... Gun rights people hate that shit. They don't like it. Gun, gun right, The gun rights people are always a thing to me because yeah. 
I mean, we're not getting rid of guns in this country, but you know, maybe in some areas we've been a little too loose. And Shit like that. You know what I mean? Common like, sense. Like, yeah. There's some common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people are. I got this buddy who has. Um, he like posts a bunch of memes, you know, like some wild shit. And one of them was like an Alzheimer's joke. And somebody messages him and is like, take this down right now. My grandfather, you know, grandfather, something just died of this. It's not funny. He's like, yeah, mine died three years ago. I'm like, this is my way of coping. And people are just, I, I always people, find with comedy yeah. in that sense of like, I feel people should have the freedom to say really, really, really dumb things. If they're not doing it to like target a group of like rally people's hate yes. against a group of people, but they're working through their emotions publicly as mm-hmm. people are work it's a weird thing. And especially with comedians, mm-hmm. man, people yeah. are quick to tell you how you should deal with trauma. Yeah, man. It's very, very it's very, very interesting. I'm always like, uh it's you know, if it's not funny, just don't laugh. And if it's not funny, if it truly is not funny, no one's gonna laugh. Yo, what do people expect when they go to a comedy? Like, I feel like <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, yeah. You go, when you go to a comedy club, you know that like it's not gonna be jokes about like you know when you take the kids home on a Sunday and the Uber eats blah blah blah. It's not that. It's gonna be some shit of somebody like pushing boundaries. Yeah. In most cases, we're talking about random shit. Whatever it is, dude. But people go there and like, have you ever met them or talked to people that? got completely offended and like even asked them like what kind of comedy are you into like i've been outside as an employee like in the comedy store sure mm. and as like a guy that answered phones i've and i've gotten to conversations with people and just people that are like so angry and just and, like crazy arguments with them uh and yeah you just ask them just like well what is it you like or like why and i always ask why and then sure. they realize it's always like a personal thing or it's like it's just like these weird morals they have. It's a lot of morals, and I think a lot of it is not grandstanding. I think a lot of people do want to be good people, and they do hate that there's horrible things happening, and they do wish they didn't, or they want them to change. And it might be this thing of them not being able to actually do anything to stop sure. it. Sure. And they feel that this is the only thing they can control and can do, which is like being like, hey, fuck you, shut up. And then you feel good because you did a thing. And, you know, it is good. I saw something we shouldn't tolerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that has a lot of logic to it. Yeah, yeah. but also standing up for what's right as things like that when it comes to, like, rights. I feel like that's so separate than, like, you know what I mean? I don't know that a comedy club is the place to do that. A (laughs) hundred percent. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Well, let me show you some comedians that I... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah you do get that sometimes where it's like... I mean, shit makes me... There's comedians like, man, at at the the Comedy Store Puffco event, there was like one person up there where I was like, oh my God, that's like not on the line. That's like, dog. Yeah. People shouldn't hear anyone talk like that. That's, yeah. It's like really <laughs> fucked up. And, and what do you do? You know, I'm like, uh, yeah. you know what I'm not going to do? Listen to that person anymore. Uh, I'm not going to ever like, you know, hear them on a podcast or not even like cancel. Just like, yeah. ah, all right. You're yeah. not really not for, for me. me. Yeah. You're not for me. Not for and, me. You know, anyways. Yeah. I've seen Eleanor Kerrigan. Man, she's my favorite. I think you guys I saw her. missed her. You missed no, her. I went out to smoke with you yeah, yeah, yeah. before she came on and, and came back after she left. Your brother said that was your favorite? My brother said that that was their favorite set of the night. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. yeah and she it. is arguably one of the funniest comedians. She's been at the store for so long. She was a server. It was back when Mitzi wouldn't let uh, women do comedy or, be, or servers become... Not women do comedy, but... Or let servers become comedians because that was like they were like you can't do that you had to like audition and then become a door person but kerrigan was like the first person to make the jump and she's so old school so funny also old rule at the store mitzi didn't like blondes working at the store because that apparently is the uh type that uh sammy her husband liked Oh, no. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. No. It's, yeah okay. it's, it's crazy. It's so funny, and that's the whole reason they never allowed to hire blondes. I was like, that's so funny. Okay. Um, but I forgot the point of the story. What was I saying? Is, El- <laughs> is Eleanor blonde? Oh, yeah. Eleanor's not blonde. She's a brunette. Uh, oh, okay. So but she's not past that yet. I guess. Yeah, she's hysterical. But I've seen her do stand up, and I've watched like families from like the Midwest. Her just like good values. Like the mom, and the dad, just be like, oh, and then the daughter and the son just be dying laughing. And it's just like, oh, yeah. I mean, it it falls upon everybody, you know, differently. 
it's a weird it's a weird thing like I, recently i feel like people have maybe it's i don't know are people outraged by comedy more now than ever i just think on twitter and i think I that's think, a place you could get things done i think people are you hear more voices being vocal about it on social media because there's more voices out there than ever before sure because the clubs so are sure still packed always been there but now yeah. everybody has a voice and a megaphone and if you ask the regular comedy audience like you know hey are you mad about this thing that's happening at you know in comedy like the things that the comedians are upset about mm. or just like people that are outraged you know um, it makes sense the people that are angry aren't participating yeah that makes a lot of sense like I, I think that's usually the case for most things yeah and um but also there's this crazy thing of like i start to see comics younger comics who it's almost now a lane to like shit on the ones that are coming down to like promote themselves mm. and maybe they and i don't know if it's they don't have not like home clubs or whatever but it's just very odd to see because i didn't come up like that we just made sure. fun of you on stage you know what i mean but it's just very odd to, it's very odd to see that's it, also celebrated yeah weird. it has at least as a brand owner it sounds familiar you know like there are people there's some people whose only chance of getting where they're go where they're trying to go is by shitting on others mm -hmm. and they might get ahead a little bit, but that has like almost no lasting power. I've never yeah. seen it work out for somebody to get ahead by just shitting on everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe for a short period of time, but it always comes to an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you looking at me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have one more? Yeah, totally. What oh. do you think is going to happen first? We're going to clone a dinosaur or aliens are going to reveal themselves? Ooh, Ooh. aliens are revealing themselves. I hope. I like, so I think this is why I like that. What future do I see is just such an open ended question before, but this one is like, yo, what, it, how do we know how aliens will reveal themselves? Like, are we capable of seeing them? I used to be the biggest skeptic about aliens. I have people in my life that swear they saw a UFO up and down, like many. And I just never believed it. And then sure enough, I see like a few documentaries. I started off with that cheese ball Bob Lazar one. Yeah. That one was like really cheesy done but what he was saying I was like what? Could any of this be true? And it's like yeah this guy did these things and what he's saying might not be true but everything else he said is true and then I fell down this hole and I think I saw this documentary out of the blue mm. that is just like government officials no longer working for the government from a bunch of different countries all talking about what they saw and then I saw another one where it was a different set of people and there was, all of it is just hearsay. But it seems like shit out there that doesn't seem to just be dead or anything and it's moving around. Maybe it's their drones. Maybe it's nothing. But I, I just think that that's a greater possibility. And I used to be a hardcore, up until like that Bob Lazar special, I was a hardcore skeptic. But yeah, I mean, do aliens reveal themselves when we take, when we blast off on Deemsters? Like, is that, could that be a thing? Is there a spectrum you have to be tuned to? I always thought... I think that's or, Annihilation. Annihilation is like, what's we've the, all um, seen those things. What's the, uh, what was it, the, the monkey uh, mushroom theory? Stone Ape Theory. Stone Ape Theory? I think that one's been, I think it's been debunked. What? I think it's been debunked. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I can't have the hope that? How nice would it be? <coughs> I mean, primates took drugs like me. They probably did. <coughs> I mean, that I would say is almost a guarantee. <laughs> I, mean, I was. I would even argue that that praying mantis the other night. <coughs> that fool was looking for weed. Yep. Because he was literally like, cause he went to like the least one that he was going. He like he ran up over. On Went up to the mouthpiece, which is where like resin would sit. Sure. And then immediately went over to the hot knife and went to the tip of the hot knife. Which are there, if there was any resin left over. I mean, that's he, where he'd was, be sitting. he was interested in the stuff. I mean, I feel like all animals, you just like on YouTube, search animals getting high yeah. on their own. They do it. I think dolphins have like, um, bounce around a puffer fish or something. Koalas? Dolphins. Koalas get high? They know about koalas. Oh, uh, eucaly eucalyptus. One more time? Eucalyptus gets koalas high. The eucalyptus tree gets koalas high. Fire. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There's a uh, bunch of animals. I have to Google. Um, a picture of a, a that's why like koalas are slower they'll just and they have those like red eyes because mm. they're like 
fucking lit. Yeah, I think there's like there's videos of them literally falling out of trees, like getting yeah. so high they'll just like fall out of I've a tree. Seen, oh, I think I've seen that with pandas. Yeah. Pandas just seem like they don't want to exist. Things. They're just <laughs> heavy, dog. They just look like they're like, just let me die already, man. I'm not good at this. Um, yeah. But they, koalas, I don't, think, I don't think I've seen fall out of a tree. <laughs> I've always wanted a, a koala as a pet. Don't they have chlamydia? Yeah, they do. <laughs> They got, they got the chlamydia. Yeah. But I mean, yo, my dad's got chlamydia. Take you know what I mean? I take right? care of him all the time. Like, oh, I love my pops, but he got, you know, he got all of it. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> That's hilarious. Does he get a freak when he watches this? No, he's just like, I should go get checked. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he, my dad's like, a, my dad's always been like a, I think he's got a girlfriend now. I'm not sure. He's, got, he's always been like a playboy. He's always been a ladies' man. <laughs> Is what they say. Oh, okay. Or is what they say. Is right. what my mom would yell at me. All right. Um, so he's going to be amused by that joke for sure. Yeah, he will definitely laugh. There's a clip right. that we put out from the podcast that I think um, is going viral. Not viral, but it's getting a lot of views on my Facebook. But it's about how uh, I tell a story about how my dad called me a poser when I was riding a skateboard in front of my middle school and fell. No way. <laughs> because oh, my I, God. I, I had him you drop. This ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, well, long story short, I had him drop me off like. A block away because I was tired, but he still had to drive the same way towards like his work was on the way to my school still. Okay. So we caught up at the light in front of my school. And as I crossed the road or as I was skating across the road, he was just like, poser. And then I fell and everyone was like, what the fuck? And it was in front of everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a top notch story, dude. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a fun. He's a fun dad. <laughs> I mean, were you pissed about that? Was that, was that like- no, I mean, I was embarrassed, I'm sure. But it's also like. It's very funny. I tried telling that it's a fun it's a fun story to tell people in podcasts, but I tried telling that on story on story I tried telling that story on stage, and just you hear women go oh like everyone <laughs> just gets everyone just gets bummed out. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, it's not, I think because a lot of people have like asshole dads, so like they might have a much poorer relationship with that kind of yeah. Or they're like or their dads like I'm not gonna let my son be a poser, and then they're just like yeah that's that's the rules that's the that's so that's an honest dad. Would you let your son be a poser? Sure. <laughs> my dad's like, I used to skateboard dad. back in the day. And I was like, really? He's I like, nah. do what my dad did and just not be around. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I... Wait, how much time do I have? Three minutes. Two minutes. I have one really good story about my dad that I think you'll... Oh, that you yeah, think you'll enjoy because we're talking about dads and I want to show off. Um, no. Uh, so my dad was a single dad and he would take me. He would hook up with other single moms and he would take me uh, to so your wingman. Yeah, I was his wingman. Right. Okay. So I would meet like their kids. Right. And like, you know, we'd like I'd we'd like hang out or whatever. And then one time, like as I got older, it was like, it was basically babysitting the older I got. Right. Mm -hmm. And then one time I came, uh, he took me to this chick's, uh, spot and the kid was like seven or eight. Like he was younger than me. And I was like 13, like 14. I was like, I am babysitting this. Like, I was like, this is my last time. This is it. I'm tapping out after this. I have to quit pops. But he was just like, are you my brother? And I was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, it was no. it was bad, dog. I was like, I can't lie to these kids anymore, dog. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. And uh, my dad. Uh, oh, my God. Rick. So I pass out on this uh, beanbag chair, right? Oh, it's going to get so bad. I don't know if I can tell you the, how, how bad it's going to get. All right. So pass out on this beanbag chair. And as I wake up, I wake up because I hear the sound of, uh, like, yeah. Right. Yeah, for and I immediately know what's going on. So I don't open my eyes. Right. I just have to pretend that I'm like not hearing this, that I'm just I'm blocking it oh, out of my no. head. And just then her dog comes up and starts humping my hand. Oh, I swear to God. No. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, they finish. They wake up. They start talking about how I'm passed out weird. And the dog's still humping me. And he's my dad's just like I can feel them staring at me. And she goes. We should really wake him up. And then he goes, yeah, that dog's really giving it to him. <laughs> so he woke me up and then I like, I was like, oh, and then I was like, we got to go, man. And then, I mean, we, we left and stuff, but I was like, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never going out again. I'm never going out again. That was the, that was the line. That was the line. He ended up going to see her after, not afterwards, but later they were still kind of seeing each other. And, um, 
I was like, I'm not going. I'm staying. So he went, and then he was like, I got to go. My son's back at home. And she got very upset because he just came and then, you know, did the deed and sure. then left. But he was like, my son's at home. He was like, I'm not going to be a bad father. <laughs> I don't even want alone any longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any longer than this hour. He was like, I'm not going to be a bad go. dad. My son's home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so man. they got into a big fight. He ended up coming home. And then uh, the next morning, there was a note on his uh, car and it was, hey, I'm sorry. It said, I'm sorry for freaking out uh, last oh. night. I promise I don't boil rabbits. I don't boil what? Rabbits. Yeah, have you seen the movie Fatal Attraction? Ah, oh, man. I was too young when I saw it. Was that a thing from Fatal Attraction? It's a, it's a, so a guy that's married has a infant has a one night stand, right? Yep, yeah. Yep. And he feels terrible about it, all this stuff. And then the one girl he has one night stand with is crazy. Okay. Not crazy. I don't know. Now I she's think she's boiling it's a, rabbits at one point. She boy she starts killing his like family and then like tries to like kill his all his like pets and all this stuff. And then I think eventually tries to kill him, but it's called Fatal Attraction. It's a crazy movie. I'm sure it's well, doesn't that's a hold very up scary today's. note then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it Yeah. That's a very scary note. My dad yeah. looks at me and he shows me, he goes, just so you know, if any girl makes a fatal attraction reference. You should leave. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. And now that I'm older and I saw that movie, I was like, bro, she was going to kill both of us. Dude. And you have a good relationship with your father through all of this. Yeah, pretty That's good. Fine. You know, as yeah. healthy as we can. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Wow. I have to cut him royalty checks, but yeah. <laughs> okay. And he, all right, great. That's awesome. Yeah, I've gotten to hit the Puffco a few times. He came, uh, he'll come out and he'll smoke. Yeah, I've been trying to get him on uh, weed a lot more. Are you going to ever have him on a show? I would love to. Would he do it? He would, but it might be too much. That would be heavy. Should that we, would be the heaviest TV We should TV fucking yet. make my dad come, too. I mean, it would just be my like... My dad does not dab. I mean... I've always wanted them to do it. I've always wanted him, I've always wanted my dad to just do a podcast where it's just, it's just two dads. It's just everybody's dads. Like it's just everyone comes and we just force them to sit in front of a podcast yeah, and you just idea. you just edit whatever you get Where from it, it but out. it's just <laughs> it's just dads and it's just dads. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is like that is so good, especially if it's like a couple comedians or even one comedian going through it play by play. Yeah. Like a, a YouTube or something where they're just like, okay, they say this and you pause for context of how fucked up they are <laughs> or like, how funny it actually is because of a back. You have to do that. It's yeah, got to yeah, be yeah. a fractal to break out. Of it is. Sure. I mean, yo, if, yeah, that is. Yeah, that'd be a great one to do. More dad stories, please. Oh, man. Like another one? No, I'm just kidding. I'm very high. I'm very high. We could do it. <laughs> I got no, a little I'm bit good. of time. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to plug before we uh, start to head out? Oh, uh, oh man, yeah, I just came here to hang with you. I know this. But, uh, yeah, this is the yeah, cool guess, fun part um, of this. This is just a fun hang. Uh, PuffCon is coming up. It is a PuffCo community event. We have vendors and food and music and all the fun things. October first. The only thing you need to get in is one of our products, either a Peak or a Peak Pro or a proxy that I got here. PuffCo.com is where you could find our stuff. Our Instagram is PuffCo. Mine is Jolly Roger. I go live sometimes. Very That's entertaining right. lives. They're all right. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes, you know, they get crazy. They get Not on my end, I don't think. No, but no. sometimes chatter is crazy in there. Yeah, it gets fun. Um, anything you want to plug? No, you want to plug Buds? Uh, buds are... <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, Sumo Snacks. Thank you, Punch Extracts. Thank you, Absolute Extracts. Uh, Hi-Fi Hops. Third Wheel Studios, the fucking new location. New I love it. This is fucking beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I always forget who I have to plug, and I don't want to fuck it up. Oh, Puffco. Hey, what up, dog? Hey. hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you so nice much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for this. Uh, yeah, thank you. This is so much fun. Um, oh, yeah, and, uh, uh, Puffco will keep you safe from that experience that that red hot glowy dabber had eight nine years ago so yeah, yeah. just don't want to scare people i'm like all my head now I'm like fuck should i even be telling that story okay. <laughs> i'll send you the final edit you'll be fine uh, <laughs> send it to the guys uh yeah kevin's yeah. just gonna be like oh my god <laughs> pulling his hair out um 
I have dates coming up in September. I think 16th and the 17th. I'm in Houston, Texas at the Riot Fest. And then other dates, I'm at another place. Ah, God damn it. Frank Castillo on Instagram. Yeah, uh, and if he bombs, don't go up and say, I'm so sorry. Actually. No, just give me weed. You know what I mean? Let's, just <laughs> smoke, so let's smoke a fat dab and then I'll feel better. Uh, thank you so much. This is great. Hey. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Oh, that's fun. Easy peasy. God, I'm so nervous about that.